searching for answers Only you provide cause you know
Hello again, everybody. So uh, I'm up to do the announcements this morning. So um, so here we go. Uh, first of all, uh, Easter last Sunday, I had a hard time believing it was only last Sunday, but it was just a week ago. And it was really awesome. For those of you who are, who were here, I know you liked as much as I did those those videos. They were really cool. I love seeing the kids and the worship music was great. It was just really neat to be able to do that. So once again, you know, the, the hidden blessings in doing some of these things differently allows us to do some things with technology we wouldn't have done otherwise. So this is really cool. And there may be a second career in uh, uh, music and, uh, you know, video production for some of the folks who worked on it. So that's a good thing too. Um, so here at Axis, uh, if uh, you've been with us before, you know that our mission is to inspire people to make Jesus the center of their lives. Uh, very difficult and very interesting times right now that teach us a lot about what exactly that means. Um, one of the things that has been changed, of course, is that we're meeting online. Uh, the state of Maryland just extended the length of time that schools will not be in session. Uh, so that, of course, means we would be doing this anyway, I expect, but we'll be online for a while yet. And uh, so we're going to uh, make a pause in the study that we've been working through, and we're going to focus on uh, what the scriptures tell us about how we can come closer to God and to one another during these times at home, how we can make Jesus the center of our lives um, all the time, not just when we're meeting on Sunday mornings, um, but all the time. That's really what we're trying to do here. So, um, so that's what we'll be focusing on this morning and for the next couple of weeks. Um, so for the ladies, session three of the Esther series is... Uh, next Saturday, April 25th at 2 p.m. Sarah will be sending an invite out to a Zoom meeting. Um, if you haven't been to the other ones and you'd like to join, you certainly can. Just reach out to Sarah at sarah.solortzano at accessmail.com. You see it up there on your screen. Uh, something else we wanted to point out is uh, we just want to uh, make sure everybody is aware that Access Church is, is willing and able to help uh, with prayer needs and with material needs, if, if you have them, uh, please reach out to um, prayer at accessannapolis.org or benevolence at accessannapolis.org if you have any prayer needs or if you have any um, material needs. Um, please let us know um, so that we can help. Um, so access communities and access circles, again, if you've been with us for a while, you'll know what these are, but if you haven't, Access communities are smaller groups that get together uh, uh, when we can, not right now, but get together in homes on a regular basis to have fellowship, to eat together, and to uh, study the word together. And access circles are smaller groups of uh, two or three or four people who get together and kind of really dive into life together in the scriptures and how they can apply it. Um, right now, uh, our access communities are meeting online. Uh, we have two of them. Uh, one meets every Thursday online, Zoom, and the other one meets every other week. Um, I'm not sure what night that one is, uh, Access 2. Uh, if you are curious about uh, either one of these things, please reach out to us at um, connect at accessannapolis.org, and we can answer your questions. Maybe I can answer my own. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another announcement, we wanted to talk about something called Love and Arundel. This is a new um, kind of effort that's being put together here in, in the uh, county where, let's see, a uh, number of churches are coming together to combine volunteers and resources to help communities uh, and with projects. Now, don't know exactly uh, what that means in terms of, you know, physical presence or, or online sorts of things, but Jorge will be sending more information about that out. So, so we'll see what that's about, but we are going to be partnering with them in this effort. Um, I think I already mentioned, if you're new to Axis, and if you have any questions about anything, or if you want to get more plugged in, please email connect at accessannapolis.org, and we'll get you all set up. Um, so, uh, oh, one other thing, I skipped giving. Of course, we're not together, so there's no basket to be passed, but please do, uh, if you're able, please do continue to give online at accessannapolis.org slash give uh, to help keep us um, financially healthy and um, and help able to to help people in need. Um, so uh, communion this morning. So we have the the honor of being able to remember our Lord's sacrifice um, on a regular basis. 
And even though we're not together, we can all do this one-on-one -on -one with God himself. Um, reflecting on his sacrifice, uh, thinking about what he did for us and what he made possible for us, especially during times like this, is it's what carries me through, is the hope that I have from this, knowing that Jesus sacrificed his life so that we could live. Um, we get to remember that this morning. So I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians. This is, there are a lot of places in scripture that or Jesus himself uh, you know, did the Last Supper and then some other places where it's referred to, but I'll just be reading from 1 Corinthians um, chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. And this was uh, Paul speaking in his letter to the Corinthians. He says, I received from the Lord, but I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. It's hard to even comprehend what you did for us. The, the, the depth of the love that you have. While we were yet sinners, you died for us. And you've given us eternal life. You've adopted us into your family. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you did for us on the cross. We thank you for this remembrance of it. We ask that you would help us to take this memory into our day, into our week, to be ever mindful of the sacrifice you made and of the promise and the hope that we have in you. We pray, Father, that you would be with us this morning. Move among us, Holy Spirit, wherever we are, move among us. Open our ears and our minds to the message. We pray for wisdom and guidance to be given to Jorge as he teaches. And we give you such thanks that you've given each one of us life. And you've given us eternal hope in you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you, everyone. How's everybody doing? Doing good? Staying uh, safe and healthy and cozy at home? That's great. Well, it's been an amazing uh, month uh, or so um, where God has been really encouraging us through these times um, of need we're going through with the most amazing news uh, with the gospel. Amen. We, we've been studying together the book of Ephesians, uh, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. And God has really been encouraging us with the promises and the hope of the gospel. That's the, that's the most important uh, thing we can hold on to. The only one, really, in many cases, we have left, and the most important one. So God has been edifying us uh, by rem reminding us the sacrifice he's done in the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Um, who are we because that? Who are we in him because that? Remember, that's the key phrase in the book of Ephesians, in him, uh, right? And, uh, you know, what is the uh, hope that is awaiting for us in heaven uh, for, with him? So that's been the, uh, uh, what's been, uh, you know, brought by the Lord to our hearts over the last month. But if you um, uh, heard uh, our, our government, government authorities announcing 
yesterday. Uh, and I know there's people from different states on this uh, uh, virtual room, but here in Maryland, at least, and it probably is going to be a similar case in our, on other states, um, governor extended the um, uh, closing of the schools through May 15th. Uh, that means a lot of action at home <laughs> for another month or so, right? Uh, and and uh, we decided then, uh, therefore, to make a shift, right? To take a few weeks to meditate on how can we, uh, can everybody hear? Hear me well? Good, let me double check something here. Yeah, we're good. So we decided to make a shift here and just meditate, uh, make a pause on the book of Ephesians and meditate, reflect on uh, how can we better, how can we continue to make uh, Jesus the center of our family dynamics during this quarantine? That's going to be the focus for the next two or three weeks. And um, this is going to be great, very practical. We're going to be, be um, uh, learning some very, very good things. So uh, the, the theme, the series, the mini series we're going to be going through is uh, titled, let me see if I can do some magic again. Let me know if it works. Access homes. Do you see it? Do you see it? Yeah. Awesome. Great. Let me let me make more room here. There we go. That's going to be um, the the name, the title of our the title of our series is uh, coming a few weeks, uh, and the and the concept is is a concept that we've been um, promoting since day one. You know, to make Jesus the center of our lives everywhere, uh, at, at work, um, at home, in everything we do in life. So the, I, the basic idea during this series is going to be very simple. It's going to flow directly from our mission statement, and it's going to go this way. Uh, it, it's to inspire our church body to place Jesus at the center of our family dynamics coming closer to God and to one another in love. That, that's the concept of Axis Homes. Again, this is a concept uh, we've been uh, kind of, with other words, talking about since day one, only right now we're making it official. And we're going to keep promoting it after the uh, uh, um, pandemic and uh, you know, and, and, and an encouragement is for all of us to consider striving for our homes to become access homes, right? For our church body not to only attend to access uh, church services on Sunday, but to to make a, a, a church out of your own home, right? One of the main, one, one of the most powerful um, memes I've been seeing a lot on social media is this picture of uh, right Satan and Jesus and Satan telling Jesus, hey, I finally closed the church. And Jesus saying, wrong. I open a church in every home. Right? So that's, that's powerful. And that's, that's what we've been all about since day one. Church is not a building. Church is not an institution. Church is a living organism. Uh, that we are to live out every single day uh, from Monday to Sunday, not only checking a box on Sunday morning. Does that make sense? So there's no better time to launch this concept, Axis Homes, uh, than, than right now. Uh, because cultivating the gospel, uh, Jesus' grace and love uh, at home is, is crucial, especially during these uh, times of global global crisis we're going through and talking about uh, global crisis uh, you know uh, when we talk about global crisis uh, you know as facing global crisis as a family uh, we need to go to Genesis chapter 6 
uh, verses 9 and on. So I'm going to uh, let you uh, grab your Bible, go to Genesis chapter 6 together with me. Uh, we're not going to project that passage on the screen because we want you to open your Bibles, read it together with us, highlight, um, take notes uh, on your Bibles. So Genesis, cha Genesis chapter 6, verses 9 and on. Uh, the uh, scripture starts saying this. This is the account of Noah and his family. In some verses it says this is the account of Noah and uh, his generations. Uh, but this is, this is beautiful starting, right? This is the account of Noah and his family or his generations. Uh, uh, you know, uh, this, is, this is powerful. It, the story goes from chapter 6 to chapter 9. So we're just going to focus on a few verses at the beginning because most of us know the story already. And then we're going to uh, highlight some parts of it. So let's read it together. Uh, this is the account of Noah and his family, it says. Uh, uh, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked uh, faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Sam, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth. Uh, Japheth. How do you say it in English? Japheth? <laughs> uh, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw uh, how corrupt the earth had become. For all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. Verse 13. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people. For the earth is, the earth is filled, filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them uh, and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. Verse 22, and Noah did everything just as God commanded uh, to him. So we all know the story, how things went down, and we've been hearing this story since we're um, little, little kids. We know that Noah then and his family went through a global crisis, uh, right? Just, just like us uh, are going through right now. And, and if you think that a few weeks of lockdown is tough, you got to talk to Noah. Because he, he, he went through a 40 days of full-blown extreme quarantine, right? 40 days. Bible says that the rain didn't stop for 40 days. They, were, they weren't even able to open a, a, a window, uh, because it was, it was pouring like crazy, like never before in, 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 in history. And it's never happened um, again. It, it was crazy. Uh, and, uh, you know, they weren't able to. And the Bible says that after those 40 days, finally, they were able to open a window. It says the, the Noah uh, opened a window, finally. But here, here's the thing. It was not only 40 days, like a, literally a quarantine, full-blown quarantine, but after the rain stopped, the Bible says that they spent a whole year in complete isolation. Uh, we don't have the time to do it, but you can read Genesis chapter 7, verse 11, uh, and then read Genesis 8, chapter, uh, verses 14 to 19, where it gives you the scope, uh, right, uh, uh, of the time that Noah and his family spent inside of the ark, which uh, some theologians uh, say that it went between 364 days up to a 370 days of the lun lunar calendar um, back in the day. Uh, so it was, it was tough. It was tough. It was more than just four or five weeks, I think, we've been going through this thing ourselves. Uh, and, and I know that it's, it's going crazy already for us. It's going crazy for, crazy for us. Uh, you know, there's, pro, there's even pro, protests out there in some states, including us, Annapolis. There's been some protests already. And that's just an expression of how uh, 
yeah, now people are starting to feel in it, right? People are starting to really uh, losing it, right? Uh, it, it stress, anxiety is, is really kicking in. And, and this is why we need to meditate on these things right now, because the same thing is happening at home. Same thing that is expressed out there through the protests is happening at home. And, 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 and I think we're going to learn some good things from, from Noah. He was, uh, for a year then, uh, confined in the ark together with his wife, Bible says, three sons, and three, his three daughters-in-law. And all the animals of the earth. <laughs> Can you imagine how crazy was that? It, it, only imagine having a couple of deer living with you for, for a year. Not even for a year, through May 15th here in Maryland. Can you imagine? Sometimes we can, we can barely deal with a puppy, right? Let, let alone wild animals in, in our houses, plus our kids, <laughs> right? I don't know if there's any difference. <laughs> but that, you know, so uh, that's total chaos. And I understand that. Uh, can you imagine the smells, the tensions uh, Noah and his family had to deal with? Uh, but Noah, and this is a beautiful thing, and his family worked together and ended up united and stronger like never before afterwards. And we don't have much information about what happened during the one year of isolation inside of the ark, but we know enough about the story and about Noah's faith uh, and character for us to learn some powerful principles that would help us navigate uh, our global crisis we're going uh, through right now, and especially at home. So number, number one uh, principle we learned from Noah's story, Noah's family navigated the crisis together, right? That's how the story begins. We just read it in, in, in Genesis 6, 9. They were together. And, uh, and this idea of these uh, statements that Noah was together with his family or some um, form of that statement is repeated 10 times along the narrative. You can, I, I encourage you to go ahead and read it together uh, with your family from chapter six to chapter nine, right? Uh, because he, here's the thing, to face a crisis, we need unity within the family. Without unity, we won't make it. And here's something that is really important for us to be aware of. Unity is something that is not natural in us because our sinful nature. We've been learning about that over the last month. We're, we're sinners. And even though Christ forgave us of our sins, we're still in our sinful uh, bodies in nature. And uh, Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7 says that this is a daily battle, right, between the flesh and the spirit. So in unity especially, uh, you know, is not natural in us. Because if you remember, we've been learning about the, the sin uh, in, in, in its most uh, broader definition is uh, uh, rebellion, is is uh, disobedience against God. So that's in, our, that's in us, you know, that this, this unity, disobedience, rebellion. Uh, uh, so uh, since it's not a natural tendency, there's, there has to be one in the family that has to take the initiative to lead the family towards unity. Unity needs to be worked out. Does that make sense? Worked out, uh, you know? It's not going to happen automatically. It's not going to happen naturally. And sometimes the person that's going to lead is going to be the husband. That's ideal. But sometimes it's going to be the wife. Sometimes it's going to be the, one, of the, uh, one of the children even. You know, we, well, I've heard stories many times where the, one of the children is the one stepping up and saying, hey, family, what are we doing? Let's, let's come together in this, right? So whoever leads, uh, it's important, you know, Someone needs to step up uh, with a humble heart and with the wisdom of God to lead the way towards unity 
you know, Proverbs eleven fourteen says that where there's no guidance, the people fall. And in times of crisis, leadership is challenged and criticized. I know, right? The, the person that steps up trying to lead is going to be challenged, is going to be criticized. If the parents, right, if both step up to, to try to bring the family to, to, to be united, it's going to, be, it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. But my advice to you uh, is that whoever is taking the leadership, uh, you know, to, 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 to unite the family with a humble posture and wisdom, let them lead. Uh, because that is so valuable. Leading to unite our families, it, it, is, it is a hard work. Again, because it's not a natural uh, tendency because we're selfish, right? Uh, so, but whoever steps up to lead, let them lead. <laughs> you know, let's not get in the way. Uh, Tom Paine, one of the f fathers of the American Revolution, said, said, said this powerful phrase, lead, follow, or get out of the way. <laughs> You know, and he said this in the midst of leading the nation in, in, in the midst of a very deep crisis. So lead, follow, or get out of the way. Here's my encouragement, my first encouragement for you. Every crisis needs a Noah. Amen. I want to encourage any of you who are listening right now in our church. Decide to be the Noah of your family. Make a decision today. And, and, and you, feel like you, you're, you feel like you're not called to do that. Well, then support the one who is taking the lead to become the Noah, right? And again, I want to I wanna make this very clear. Ideally, is the husband um, or ideally is both parents. That's actually the best, the husband and wife working together. But, you know, if, if one of your children comes up with a word from the Lord, <laughs> I mean, listen, that's sometimes the Lord speaking uh, to, to us. You know, I had the privilege to just uh, uh, experience a little bit of that at my home when I was, when I was younger. But anyways, and, and, and here's my, my recommendation. Whoever decides to become the Noah of the family, uh, uh, and if it is the parents together, start by leading with faith. And that's the second thing we learned from uh, Noah. Start by leading with faith. Uh, you know, Noah led with faith and by faith. Uh, Hebrews eleven seven says, uh, By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet not seen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark, excuse me, for the saving of his household, right? Uh, by this, he, command, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith, right? So, so Noah trusted in the Lord in the midst of unseen events. This is what the passage is saying. Uh, these are unseen events, you know, for us as well right now and god uses these times to grow our faith how's your faith doing after 30 plus days of quarantine right how is our faith doing after 30 plus days of quarantine are you uh, encouraged or are you dominated by anxiety and fear be encouraged that, that's what the Bible is, is telling us. Just like Noah, walk by faith, lead by faith, be encouraged and become an encouragement for your crew. Become an encourager of your family to, for them to trust in the Lord. That's the first thing you got to do. Parents, that's the first thing we have to do. Wives, husbands, we need to do this. And if you're single, the same thing for you, you know, be, live through this situation with faith, be encouraged, inspire the, uh, the, your family uh, to center their lives around Jesus. 
I can see Noah saying things like, hey, family, we're going to do this thing, right? And the family looking at him like, have you lost your mind? And him replying, saying, hey, family, come here. Listen, this is the whole point of faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Don't worry. God's got us. That's leading with faith. That's leading by faith. That's, that's the description Hebrews chapter 11 gives us about what faith is all about. So choose faith instead of spreading negativity and anxiety at home. Number two here, become an inspiration for your family to be in the world, in the word. Uh, I know we've been talking about and, and encouraging families to uh, do devotionals together, right? Now we want to introduce part of Axis Homes concept. We want to in- introduce the idea of family circles. Family circles is basically the same we do with our circles, our access circles with other brothers and sisters from, from the church. Just do the same thing at home with your crew. Do a family circle. Read the word, you know, share some encouragements and, and, and praise and pray the Lord. You know, take 10, 15 minutes, uh, you know, every day. You know, it takes us maybe... 15 minutes every night when we do it here at home. And it, is, it doesn't have to be a full-blown Bible study. Don't make it complicated. Just have someone reading a scripture. Doesn't have to be a Bible study. Then have somebody, then everybody, they have everybody sharing, you know, one thing they're thankful for uh, to God that happened during the day. And then praise the Lord together and pray um, together, you know. We don't do it every single day. We might do it three or four nights uh, 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 a week. So it doesn't have to be perfect. But, but please, we encourage you. These times are important. You need to lead by faith, inspiring your family to be in the Word, uh, believing that God will provide. Uh, right? You, you might have to sacrifice some work you might feel like you have to do at night and you you rush your kids to bed, but Hey, sacrifice that work. Sacrifice some of those goals uh, in order to spend more time with your family in the word, believing that God will provide all you need. Like he did for Noah and his family. And lastly, but not least, uh, talking about faith, leading by faith, up your game in your personal time with God. Lead yourself to the word, to the world, to the word. I'm sorry. Because here's the thing, without you having a personal time with the Lord, without us having a personal time with the Lord, we won't be able to do the first two, right? We won't be able to become an encourager to our, to our crew, we won't be able to inspire them to be in the Word if we're not doing it, because we ourselves will be empty. The Bible says that Noah walked with God. Remember, he was righteous, he was faithful, and he walked with God. Genesis 6 starts telling us. And he walked with God because he believed in God. So decide to spend more time in the word, in the word, believing that communion with God, walking with God is the very thing that is going to keep you going. Choose a reading plan. There's many tools out there. We, we, in Access, we don't want to dictate what to you, what to do exactly. You, you, get, you have the freedom to choose, pick and choose. Your, the, the reading plan of your preference. There's many like cool apps out there. A, a, a cool one that I, I've been hearing about a lot is called the Dwell app, for instance. That if you, ha- if you struggle with reading the scriptures and you know that's too much wording and I get sleepy, well, listen to it. Listen to it. The Dwell app is, is like the Spotify for Bible reading, Bible um, listening you just listen the word into you 
you know, and whatever it works for you, but, but pick a plan, uh, use an app uh, and have a time with the Lord. And, and, and here's something important, connect with your circle. Talking about the, uh, out, the, 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 the circles we're doing right now, because that's the main point of the circles is to keep each other accountable and encouraged to be having a personal relationship with God. You know, the circles are not just to have fun or say nice words. It's to, to help us remain accountable, to help us remain encouraged, right? So circles out there, uh, if, I know that most circles are, 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 are connecting during the week through Zoom, through text messages, and I am so glad for that because circles are perhaps the most important thing right now of everything we do. Circles are the most important thing. If you're not connected with a circle, I invite you to uh, send us an email to connect at annapolis.org and we'll give you more information and, uh, about how can you connect with, with a uh, circle. Uh, it's so important. So, because Noah had faith and Noah walked with the Lord, he was also able to walk in obedience and self-control. This is the third thing we learned from the story. Genesis 6, we just read, it says, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. First Peter 4, 7 says that the end of all things is, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded. You see? Because he had faith, because he walked with the Lord, he was able to walk through the global crisis he was going through with obedience and self-control. Church, I cannot stress enough uh, to, to emphasize the fact that this is critical at home in times of crisis. Obedience and self-control. Remember, again, Noah was, was with his wife, three sons, three daughters-in-law, and all the animals. Can you imagine again all the family tensions that might have exploded inside the ark, let alone all the maintenance of the full blown zoo he was dealing with? I can hear the flamingo telling the hippo, right? Close your mouth, you know, when you're eating. Like, <laughs> Like Sophie, that's what Sophie tells Heath all the time. Close your mouth, right? And the flamingo telling that to the hippo, you know, especially when you're eating watermelon, <laughs> right? And the crocodile, you know, wanting to buy the legs of the deer at every opportunity he has. And Moses with his family having to keep all the, all the order, all these yeah. together. No, Noah, I'm sorry. I'm getting too excited. Noah having to keep the order, right? Because he's, 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 he's going crazy. Sounds like home. And they were lucky that they didn't have any babies on board. At least the Bible doesn't tell us. I'm telling you, that would have been a different story, right? The ark would have collapsed. The ark would have sunk right? if there was any babies. Well, I don't know, probably. Um, I, that's just a joke. <laughs> so patience and self-control at home is crucial, always, but especially when going through times of crisis. That's what the context of First Peter is telling us. The end of all things are, is coming. So be self-controlled, right? That was exactly what Moses was experiencing. The end of all things in his time came about. He needed in times of crisis, we need it. We need in times of crisis to be obedient to the Lord and practice self-control. The opposite of self-control is to be given into the wishes of our flesh, into our anxieties, into stress. You know, but Galatians 5, 24, 26 says, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. 
That's what we need to do. I know that anxiety, stress kicks in and disobedience and, and just wanting to kill one another. But we need to crucify our passions and our desire, desires. Paul keeps on going saying, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. L listen to these words. Let us not be become conceited, conceited, I'm sorry, provoking one another, envying one another. Right? If we don't do this, if we don't practice keeping a step with the Spirit, if we don't practice obedience, self-control, this is what's going to happen. Galatians 5.15. But if you bite and devour one another, listen to those words. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. So when you lose your patience and use harsh words against one another at home, it's like beating one another. It's like devouring one another. It's consuming one another. You know what? It's like shooting to your to to one another you know the, when i was uh, studying this when i was preparing the the message i the image we see on movies oftentimes came to mind right when 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 there's uh, a person that is about to shoot someone right um and, and 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 you know and i just thought well that's exactly what harsh words do proverbs 18 says that the tongue kills we, we can kill somebody with our tongue, with our words. And, and like in the movies, again, you know, you see these scenes oftentimes where the person is about to shoot and there's other people around the person telling him, don't do it, don't do it, right? You're using that. Don't, don't do it, don't do it. I, I just want to encourage you to see this image in your minds when we're about to shoot a relative at home with harsh words. Have an image that you're, you're pointing to, the, to, your, to your children or to your wife, to your husband with a gun when you're about to say harsh words. And imagine the Holy Spirit right next to you telling you, don't do it. Don't do it. We got to be careful. Instead, choose love. And this is the, the last thing we, we're going to meditate on this morning that we learned from Noah and his story. Choose love. First Peter 4a, we, Paul, uh, Peter continues on saying, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Church, this is love level Jesus. Right? This is love, love of Jesus. This is the context of 1 Peter 4. You know, Peter is saying these words after he's saying all the things that God, that Jesus did for us, all the love he poured on us. Um, and then he says, just like he did it for you, love one another earnestly because sins, because love covers multitude, multitude of sins. This is the type of genuine love that leads us to not focus on people's failures, but have grace to one another like Jesus had with us. In fact, Noah's name, this is interesting, Noah's name means the one who comforts. You know, Noah was a man that strived to keep the love of God flowing within his family. And this is key. This is key. Can you imagine? Inside the ark for a year without love, that would have been a hell. One week without love, one day without love at home, things go down. We, we all have experienced that. We need to practice love, especially in these times of crisis. I want to encourage you all to become a comforter for your household. Become like Noah. The one who comforts one another with love. Love leads us to forgive 
multitude of, of sins in two very practical ways, flexibility and tolerance. Flexibility, let me read real quick to you a definition I found on in our article I, I read. Flexibility, it says, is a personality trait that describes the extent to which a person can cope with changes in circumstances and think about problems and tasks in novel, creative ways. This trait is used when stressors or unexpected events occur occur, requiring a person to change their stance, outlook, outlook or commitment. Flexibility is so important. Tolerance, tolerance, uh, this is a description I found, is the ability to deal with something unpleasant or annoying or to continue existing despite bad or difficult conditions. This is what Jesus did for us. He came to earth and showed us the ability to deal with the unpleasant and annoying situation we were in. Why? Because he loved us. Here's the thing. The absence of flexibility and tolerance opens the door to selfishness, selfishness and hostility. In other words, war at home. You know, eating one another, devouring one another, consuming one another. Sounds familiar? Without the love of Jesus at the center of our homes, you know, we would, you know, especially now that we're confined at home, people in our family, the members of our family, will end up focusing on fighting for space, fighting for care, fighting for their needs, instead of the needs of the team in caring for one another in love. For us, movie times are a good example. <laughs> movie times, you know, uh, Jorjito wants to watch Spider-Man. Uh, Sophie wants to watch love movies. Uh, my wife wants to watch Natural Libre. Uh, and <laughs> my mom that is with us right now wants to watch Mexican movies, <laughs> you know, in Spanish. And it's a battle and we have to call for love, hey guys, it's not about what you want. It's about the team in love. Let's carry, let's care for the team, not for what we want individually. So flexibility and intolerance that is based on love enables us to be open and work together in love for the good of everyone. Amen. This is a Jesus center home. This, uh, this is a, an Axis home filled with his love and his grace. The big question is, when there is tension at home, how are you dealing with it? In the selfishness of your flesh, seeking for your desires, your needs, your justice, shooting and biting to one another, or in the spirit, praying for patience, Practic, pra, aiming to, uh, towards unity, uh, practicing flexibility and tolerance out of love. Remember this, Jesus chose flexibility and tolerance towards us. Romans 5.8 says that he loved us even when we were sinners. Jesus chose love. This is the Leave It Out Challenge for us this week, church. Think how would Noah lead your household in these times of crisis, of global crisis. Even better, think how Jesus would lead your household in these times of crisis. I bet Jesus would strive for unity, faith, self-control, and love within our families. So, if Jesus is at the center of your home, I encourage you. Choose unity instead of criticism. Choose faith instead of anxiety and despair. Choose self-control and love instead of harsh talking and selfishness. Remember, we're in this together. Our home are like little Noah's boats. 
and when we need to navigate through this global crisis together that's what that's how genesis 6 starts and it's repeated 10 times throughout the whole story together this is god's desire for us church to be together and to come stronger and more united than ever before afterwards amen let's pray to that end together jesus thank you so much for this powerful word thank you because in your uh word we find encouragement and we find truth uh, we pray lord that that we would uh come together at home to face this global crisis we're dealing with right now that we will be one always but especially right now lord i pray for uh noah's to came up step up within our homes and start leading towards unity i i pray for mom and dad at home to lead their family towards unity making you the center of their homes i pray for those um, individuals uh, dealing with anxiety that you will become the uh, the center of their uh, lives at this moment of uh, uncertainty i pray for those marriages struggling lord that we that they we all would come together and, and and stop using harsh uh words uh uh towards one another and practice flexibility and tolerance i pray for the children lord that they will obey our parents that, that even even they would uh, receive the call to become noahs themselves fighting for unity fighting for love fighting for uh just uh um you to become the center of our homes jesus uh, we pray that you would uh, protect us that you would uh that you, your presence will be in the midst of our families our marriages and our children and these times of need lord may our homes become jesus center homes may our homes become little churches maybe our, may our homes become living organisms where you are at the center and everything we do in our every day revolves around the person of Jesus. Pray this in your mighty name. Amen. To make a wretch his treasure. Well, I almost can't even say it. It's hard to say that word, but it's even harder for us as humans to understand the depth of what his love really is. What unconditional really means. We think we know what unconditional love is, but he invented it. Lord, we thank you this morning that you do love us, not just as people, but as your children. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure. should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory
Behold the man upon a cross My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice, Jesus, that you made on the cross. That we could have eternal life with you and be part of your family. That we'd be heirs in Christ. Thank you. We give you all the glory today. In the name of Jesus. That was awesome. Thank you, Pat, for leading us uh, in worship. Uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> that's all for, for today, for now. Um, why don't you go ahead and unmute your microphones and just say hi to everyone. And uh, no insults. No, yeah. right? Hey, everybody. Hey. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, I just want to ask. Hi, everyone. Hi. I just have one question here. That's Hi. Hi. What's going on with that mustache, Mike? I'll tell you. What's going on. Oh. I like it. It's a good luck, Mike. I like it. <laughs> My brother in, in Stashville. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know Andrew likes it too. Like Mario like it. I, kind of like I love it. it. I think it's awesome. I'm gonna do it next Sunday. I I'm this gonna do it. Yes. Do it, Andrew. <laughs> 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 Time. It looks like this guy. Help me out! I know Sarah's yeah. not the video. <laughs> <laughs> I want for pizza by Go Noodle. Hey, you, you look like. Can't stop. One of the actors of the Mexican movies my mom liked. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it was funny. I was putting Libby to bed last week, and she's like, "Daddy, um, you look Mexican." <laughs> That's good. Um, That's awesome. Awesome. Good, good. Everybody doing okay? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's start. Let's start. Uh, let's start, let's start to connect with our guys. Your, your community, 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 and also uh, your circles. Uh, circles. Uh, shout out to shout all those who are connecting with us, been connecting with us lately. Patrick, Patrick love to see you on, man. Good to be here. Good to see you guys. How are you doing, man? Everything going well? Yeah, we're doing. Doing well. Yes. <laughs> Hope everyone else does as well. Awesome. Love to see you, Ryan. Love you, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have to clarify you. which Patrick. <laughs> okay. I don't know which Patrick that was meant for, but I'll take it. My, <laughs> <laughs> My niece Maria from all the way from Texas. How are you, Maria? So good to see you. Hey. Hi. <laughs> oh, I miss you guys. Mimi and Pop from Florida. Hey. Yay. Mimi and Pop. <laughs> well, who else is from out of state? Anna. Um, the Garcias are from Texas. Yeah. Anna, Marcia, Anna Maria. Hi. Garcia. Yeah. From Texas. Uh -huh. My parents are from Pennsylvania. Yeah. In Pennsylvania. My parents are from Pennsylvania, yeah. Jennifer. Yeah. In the house. We love to see you guys. Uh, we love to see you. Parents in the house. That's awesome. <laughs> we love you guys. We really appreciate you. Okay. We love you guys. Stay connected. Bye-bye. Okay. Oh, hi, Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. 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 Nice, Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Been away from home. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.